PlayStation Net Eurose videos. In the previous video, I deployed the bouncing ball executable to the Net Eurose. In this video, I want to make some customizations to the C code of the bouncing ball program, specifically around text changes, uh, changes to the number of balls that are displayed, and also an improved pause function. I'm going to use the NetBeans integrated development environment. It's a free download. I've created a new folder called custom, which keeps it separate from the original code here. So I'll go into custom and I'll open main.c. First change I want to make, this max obj or max objects defines the maximum number of balls that are displayed on the screen. I'm just going to reduce that to 100. Also what I want to do is the value for the default number of balls that are displayed when the program runs, I think is one, yeah, integer nobj, so that's the ball object or, or the number of objects on screen. I'm going to change that to 50. So what that should do is, when the executable runs, instead of seeing one ball bouncing around, you should see 50 by default. I'm going to come down here. Now this section here defines the text. So I want to just comment out the time for now. I don't think that serves any purpose for this, for this video. Comment that out. I just want to change that to something a bit more descriptive, just change it to balls. I'm going to comment total timeout as well. So I'll save that, do a quick test deploy. So I'm using DOSBox as in the previous video. So I run Sayocons. And to do a deploy. So by default, <coughs> the number of balls equals 50. And if you push up on the pad, maximum balls 99. I'll do another tweak to the code to make sure that's 100. If you push down, the minimum is 1. And also the text has changed on the right hand side. looking at the text section again I'm going to comment out this line here as it duplicates the information that's displayed here and also I'm just going to remove a couple of spaces there I'm just going to make a few minor changes here so to push up on the pad increases the number of balls pushing down decreases So in preparation for the amended um, pause function, I'll just put L2. Let's put that to lowercase. And here, just change that to quit. Save that. Just going to scroll down. The line here, limit range, that's reducing the number of objects on the screen um, to the maximum, minus one. I'm not sure why that is, so I'll just remove that minus one. 
so that should now display 100. Also here, I mean, th th this is the pad read function, so this takes input from the, from the joypad. If you push up, it increases it by 4, if you push down, it decreases by 4, so I'll just change that to 2. Let's see what difference that makes. Save that. Okay, so if I push up, yeah, so that's now saying balls 100, I'll push down, sit down to 1, and you can see the changes to the text have been implemented, so plus plus balls, minus minus, pause and quit. Regarding the pause function, that's implemented here with this block of code. So if pad L1 is held down, then essentially what it's doing is uh, stopping the program from running. But that involves keeping the button pressed down, which isn't ideal. Typically you, you would want to press one button um, for the application to pause and then press a button for it to resume. So to implement that, what I'm going to do is create a global variable called is paused. So that can go that here. So integer paused equals zero. So by default we don't want the application to be paused. We're going to the main the main loop. I want to say here is uh, while the game isn't paused you should run this this main execution block. So I'm going to say if paused equals zero. Save that just to give it a quick test. Actually, no, I won't test it now. What I'll say is, so if pause equals zero, run the uh, application. That's fine. And if it's if it is pause, so if pause equals one, then we don't want anything to run. So we want the the application to stop. So we need to get the input from the pad to set that global variable to to one. We come down here and we just make a few minor changes. Paused equals zero. I want to put these two lines in this section as well because we don't want the number of balls to increase once the game is, uh, once the application is paused. So I'll just comment those two lines out. So, in other words, only increase or decrease the balls if. Um, if the game isn't paused. OK, 
Okay. If if pad and pad L one So if pad L1 is, is pressed, then set paused equals to one. We also want to stop the sound from playing. Stop sound. Remove that, so I don't need that anymore. So I'll test this the pause function before the unpause function. So how this should work is, if the game is unpaused, check for pad L1 being pressed. If it's pressed, then pause the game, which should then register up here to say, don't run any of this code. Get rid of that white space. by pressing select that quits the program. So the resume function, what we want to do is say if or else if paused equals one, And if pad plus pad R1, because that's what we want to press to resume the application. Then we'll say paused equals zero. And we want to initiate the sound, because we want to start the sound playing again. And play sound. Save that. So now if I press L1, the application pauses, sound stops, press R1, application resumes, and the sound starts again. So 100 balls, pause, resume, 100 balls is on screen. So if I try to increase the number of balls when the game is paused, it's still at one. 